All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Bleacher Report had a suggestion for a uh, defensive end the 49ers ought to pick up. We'll discuss it coming up next. But first, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out. They're in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. Get some brisket. Get some brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary and tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video brought to you by Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles, 205 Cypress Avenue in Pacific Grove, California. Call my friend Anthony Catania down along the Monterey Peninsula at 831-521-5264. Well, you know, it was interesting. Coach Yak, who I follow on, uh, on Twitter, put out a Bleacher Report article that said bleach report says the 49ers should be interested in trading for jets edge rusher Hassan Reddick, the former Eagle. And they estimate his value to be a 2025 third round pick. Um, it's interesting. It says the 49ers have a strong pass rushing tandem after adding Leonard Floyd and free agency to compliment Nick Bosa. However, a team with Super Bowl aspirations with which the 49ers clearly have cannot have too many good pass rushers and San Francisco remains 30.4 million below the cap. Um, okay, a couple things on this one. One, um, I like this. I like this idea. Um, I agree. If you're a Super Bowl contender, uh, you can't have enough good pass rushers. I agree with that. If you said, what can the Niners do to improve their chances of winning the Super Bowl? I would say, uh, get another edge rusher or get another defensive tackle. Um, and maybe after that, maybe I go to a different position, like an offensive tackle or tight end, um, maybe a receiver, if it was the right receiver, so on and so forth, maybe a safety, um, maybe a corner, if it was a true number one corner. But if you're saying, you know, the Niners like to see their defense, they look at things from the front to the back, that everything that you get done up front impacts everything that you're doing on the back end, which we know is true, uh, but it seems like teams can neutralize a big pass rush up front by getting the ball out quickly. But there was a lot of talk that the Jets who traded for a son Reddick, that a Reddick's not happy in New York and may want out and may get traded again before week one. And he's a really, really efficient speed rusher. Now he is 240 pounds. I don't know that he's a perfect fit for what Chris Kacarek wants to do in the wide nine. He definitely can get off the ball. He'll definitely, you know, if you put him opposite Nick Bosa, there's going to be all kinds of room because Reddick is a speed rusher. You got to kick outside and, and take care of him. And then you got Bosa on the other end. So you got those tackles kicking out wide and that would create a lot of room to play games underneath and shoot gaps with linebackers. And so there's a lot to like about Reddick, but he is 240. You know, I think if the Niners had their druthers, they would rather have a defensive end who's like 270. Um, and so I don't know if he's an ideal fit, but I love that idea. I love the idea of, uh, trading a 2025 pick um, for that one extra piece that maybe gets you over the top this year. I mean, um, and a, an investment in this year, I think, is is a, a, a smart investment. I mean, you got this, you know, you got the last year of Brock Purdy on a rookie contract. You got the deepest roster you're probably ever going to have with this uh, with this regime because of the money that Purdy's making this year and because of the money that he's due to make. So they are in a situation where, you know, this is going to be a great opportunity for them to still have a great quarterback, maybe even an MVP candidate quarterback making 950 grand or whatever he's going to make. Um, while big time NFL quarterbacks and starters around the league make between 25 and 50. Um, now he's going to be there. He's going to be there in a year. And so there's some urgency to the 49ers getting it done this year. But that's interesting. Um, as I said, there's three or four positions. Defensive end is one of them. Look at the Niners on the defensive end side. They've got Bosa and Yatir Gross Matos probably on first and second down. Then Yatir Gross Matos is going to probably come off the field for Leonard Floyd on third down. But pass rusher four and five are Drake Jackson and Robert Beal. And both those guys are talented and yet unproven and have been very injury plagued. Um, and you got to have them perform for you this year. I mean, you don't there. It's not like they're defensive end six, seven, eight, nine down the list. And they're just depth pieces. And, you know, if they perform, it's extra. No, this is, these are now your 
your, you know, your fourth best and your fifth best defensive end. You're going to probably keep five D tackles, five DNs. You need your fourth and fifth. I mean, it's not like on the offensive line. On the offensive line, your starters play the entire game, every game, and unless they go out with an injury, um, they're playing every game. On the defensive line, your backups play. So you only have so many guys up on game day, but they all play. And they play in a rotation. And if you could add you know, a, a truly impactful fourth or fifth edge rusher, that has real value. That has real value and can win you football games. So I really like that idea. There are other guys out there that we've talked about that I think might be available at the cutdown that I would be waiting around for. Guys like Joseph Osai from, from Cincinnati. Um, Seattle may cut Daryl Taylor. They're saying the Saints, it looks like, have a numbers game and may wind up cutting loose Isaiah Foskey or trading him. Uh, John Kaminsky, they're saying, may get cut. You know, those are four defensive ends right there that you could sign off the street and not give up any draft choices. And so you may want to go that route first. But um, Hassan Reddick for a third-round pick um, to, to get another speed rusher, as I said, he's not an ideal suited, you know, ideal fit. I'd almost rather, you know, have a Michael Clemens type who's like 270, but um, he'd create a lot of space on defense and he'd make a lot of plays and he would definitely put a lot of pressure on opposing offensive tackles. And um, he's a proven pass rusher, that's for sure. So an interesting story there from Bleacher Report. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to give me your thoughts below. I'd love to know what you think of the possibility of the Niners making that kind of a trade. Hassan Reddick for a, for a 2025 third round draft choice. And, and if you look at the 49ers and you think about their defensive line and what they have, you know, in at the defensive tackle spots, they're pretty fortified, right? You got Malik Collins and Javon Hargrave. Then you got Jordan Elliott and Kevin Givens, let's say are your twos. And then your threes, you still got Kalia Davis and T.Y. McGill. Both of those guys are NFL caliber players. Um, but then you also have Evan Anderson and Shaquille Brown, who I think are both very intriguing, who could potentially uh, make the roster. So you're you're pretty loaded. I mean, you got four lines there. You got eight defensive tackles for five spots. So you you know you've got you've got some good competition. But at defensive end, it goes Leonard Floyd and Nick Bosa. And then you tear gross Matos, but you need defensive end four and five to play. And after that, it's Drake Jackson, Robert Beal, Austin Bryant, Alex Barrett. Um, it, it really thins out. So, I mean, last year in training camp, we saw the 49ers bring in Taco Charlton and a couple other guys along the way uh, trying to, you know, ultimately they had to trade for Randy Gregory. They had to trade for, for uh, Chase, Chase uh, Young. Um, and you know, I mean, it was, it was an, it was a situation where they were thin at defensive end most of the year. Um, and they never quite got that D line going and never really got that outside pass rush consistently there. So this year they're banking that Drake Jackson fulfills the potential. He was a second round pick 2022 that Robert Beal fulfills his potential fifth round pick 2023 had a real strong finish to his year last year. So this is going to be interesting to me. This is the one spot where the 49ers will not be patient. If Drake Jackson is hurt and can't play, if Beal is not giving them much, they'll bring in guys and they'll make trades and they'll, they'll do additions because they know how important this fourth and fifth defensive end is in this defense. So either Drake and Beal will perform or they'll find other guys. And if they're looking around, a guy like Reddick would make a lot of sense. All right. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Thanks to Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.